hope you get the opportunity to do what I did for the last three days and have my entire family, both children, grandkids, grandchildren, um, everybody all together for a couple of days. That doesn't happen very often, but uh, sorry we got here late today, but we had a little trouble getting in and had to get in a little further away and it took a little time. But, uh, you know, we're excited to be here. I know there's probably some issues that will get discussed here that you have utmost interest in. Um, but really, you know, there's nothing really to comment about unless, one, one, until we make some decisions about some of the things and how we want to move forward with one of the things and really how we want our game, you know, to be. Um, so, you know, I won't comment on much of that stuff. One thing I would like to comment on is, you know, being here at the SEC, um, you know, brings to mind losing Commissioner Slav, you know, this spring, just a few weeks ago. Um, you know, the guy was probably as influential and had as much impact on college football and the, and, and the, the, the whole Southeastern Conference in terms of uh, the changes that were made and how he elevated our league and um, the class and style that he did it with. Um, very, very intelligent. Uh, had great input and thoughts on a lot of things. I learned a tremendous amount from him. Um, and I, I think he could articulate it in a way to all of us uh, and our big egos that we, we sort of accepted it. And uh, I think uh, he was a unique leader in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I think his family knows that um, our thoughts and prayers are certainly with, with them. So. Uh, other than that, any questions you have for me? Just to jump off, uh, are all the players, uh, have they all reported already, or you're still waiting on a few? No, we have a uh, couple guys that um, are not out of school yet. Uh, we have one guy that still has to get his grades right. Um, and um, so, and these things could get resolved in the next 24 or 48 hours, or, uh, they may take until July term for a couple guys, but uh, that's all still kind of up in the air and, until the end of the week. Nick, what do you see in Lane Hatcher out of Pulaski Academy and your expectation for him? Lane Hatcher from He's Pulaski a, Academy. The quarterback. Right? Quarterback, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I was just, uh, you know, we, we were kind of, with our quarterback situation and only having three guys on scholarship, you know, we wanted to bring a couple guys in, whether we, they had to be recruited guys or guys that we could, we thought had some upside um, as potential walk-ons who could be potential guys that we would put on scholarship. So, um, you know, we, we were excited to be able to, uh, you know, he's been in a very winning program. He's a very bright guy. He's a good athlete. I uh, thought he was a really good decision maker. Um, actually, very accurate with the ball. Uh, so we, we, we were kind of excited to get somebody of his caliber to be able to come in and um, you know contribute at that position because of our number situation there. Speaking of, of that program, that's the one that doesn't punt and onside kicks every time. How much do you get idea-wise when you're watching video of high school players, uh, just in terms of, oh, I might want to put that uh, in the memory bank. Well, I, I get a lot from it. I mean, I, in fact, it's interesting that you say that. I was actually watching recruits on the way up here uh, because our coaches will, you know, do a lot of filming when they go see guys in spring practice. So I see guys do a lot of drills and I see a lot of new equipment that's being used that I hadn't seen before. Um, that I said, well, that would be a good drill or that would be an interesting thing to add. Um, and, you know, we do all these analytics now on all this stuff, you know, like watching the basketball game last night. There's two things that happen. You shoot a layup or you shoot a three. There's nothing in between. I, no, no, and that's what everybody says. That's how you should win. Except when you don't make the threes, you don't have much chance to win. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think any time that we see things like that, you sort of analyze those things and want to know what are the real percentages here? Uh, and 
even though some of them are a little out of the box, the percentages actually do work, you know, in a lot of cases in terms of, um, and you know, when we onside kicked against Clemson a couple years ago, everybody said, man, that was a big, 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 like risk. Well, even if we wouldn't have got the ball, they would have got the ball on the 40 yard line. If our kickoff coverage was good, they would have got it on the 25. So it was really a 15 yard penalty risk, you know, basically. So sometimes not as big as you think. I know, I know, uh, go ahead, Cecil. The NCAA passed a rule limiting you to 20 headsets, and I was curious what you're going to do with your other 80 headsets. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we're still trying to, you know, figure that out. Uh, you know, I, I basically put the interns in the, in the press box because they're allowed to do technical um, sort of type work, so they kept all the charts. Uh, they kept all the stats. Uh, they kept all the information that the coaches would put up at halftime. In fact, they would put that information up. Uh, so now, you know, we pass the rule. And I would not have interns on the sidelines as a general rule because they're not allowed to coach the players. So, and sometimes any communication that occurs is viewed as coaching, you know, in this day and age. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how we're going to manage all that, but um, we're not going to have anybody on the headsets that aren't allowed to be on there. So um, I, I don't necessarily think it's a good rule. I think it's very short-sighted. Um, I think it's um, it, it's an opportunity for somebody to kind of try to control how many people we can have on staff, um, but. Look, everybody knows my theory on all this. You know, we're not allowed to hire, hire high school coaches in any kind of developmental position. They've got to be full-time on the field. Um, so if we don't have interns and, and graduate assistants and people who want to be a part of our game, uh, who, who's developing coaches? Where, where are they coming from in the future? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm really happy and pleased that we have probably five or six of our players, former players that have played for us over the last 10 or 11 years that want to come back and be coaches. And I can't offer them all opportunities to do that. We have some in the program, but others we don't. Well, I think it's healthy for them. Uh, and I also think it's good for um, student athletes that we have guys that like the game, had a great experience, uh, want to go impact and influence somebody else the way they got impacted by a coach I, I don't see what's so bad about that and it's not cost saving because it doesn't cost much so I, I don't know I don't know who's driving all this stuff but you know to me it's kind of like mouse manure when you're up to years and elephant doo doo can't talk for one more when Nick, <laughs> Nick when you lost in the Corey Smith transfer situation a couple of years ago. Why could put up the same fight with Brandon Kennedy, especially when there seems to be more the push for more freedom with particularly with graduate transfers and proposals. Well then we should change the rule. I don't think it should be on me. I think we should change the rule. Right? If we agree in the SEC at these meetings that we're gonna have free agency in our league and everybody can go wherever they want to go when they graduate and that's what's best for the game, then I think that's what we should do then Brandon Kennedy can go wherever he wants to go. But if we don't do that, why is it on me? Because we have a conference rule that says he can't do it. And he can do it, but he's supposed to sit out for a year. So why is it on me? It's not even my decision. It's a conference rule. I always give people releases. And he has a release to go wherever he wants to go, but the conference rule says he can't go to the conference. So what, why is that on me? But would, would the you Marie like, Smith thing wasn't on me either. Would, would you like Last just some clarity? On, it's either the rule or it's not the rule. Is that that the? Just, it seems well, like there's well, a rule. Let me ask you a question. question. If, if we make a rule that guys can transfer whenever they want to transfer, how are we supposed to get people to do the what they should do? I'm not talking about as football players. I'm talking about as people talking about making good choices and decisions off the field. I'm talking about doing the right things academically. So if a guy's missing class and I say, you're not going to play in this game, 
because you're missing class, which I've done on occasion. And then he just says, well, I'm, I'm transferring. Is that good? I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm asking. I'm asking you all a question. I, you, don't, you don't ever seem to have to answer the questions like that. <laughs> 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 it would seem like, you know, in this case, it's <laughs> Brooke, Brooke Trout look. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it would seem like it would be, be different in this case with, for graduates and undergraduates. The graduates can just go and the undergraduates would still have to sit out. Would that know. be fine? Or would that be different? I, I think that's a rule that we, that, that's something that we should address as a league. I mean, and to be honest with you, if we allow that to happen in our league, I think it'll benefit some schools more than others. And I think we're one of the schools that it would benefit. But I still am not for it. Guys, I gotta get coached to a meeting, so I hate to break this Thank up. Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Coach.